there friends, it's Diamond and I did the research on Squanto the way I said I would and Lucky was right. It is a very interesting story. I was able to get this book from my local library. I must say, Squanto's life and the life of Joseph from the Bible are so similar. Alright, let's begin. Squanto was part of the Patuxent tribe. He was born around 1580. Not much is known about his early life. His tribe was known to be a friendly and hardworking people. The story goes that Squanto and some other boys were tricked into boarding a ship which then sailed to Europe. Once they arrived in Spain, the young boys were sold into slavery. Joseph too was sold into slavery by his brothers to the far off land of Egypt. It's believed that Catholic friars purchased Squanto so he wouldn't be forced to be a slave. Joseph also was purchased by a kind man named Potiphar, who saw that he was good and put Joseph in charge of his household. The Catholic friars eventually got Squanto to England where they decided to help him. First they taught him the native language, English, then they vowed to help him get home back to America. Many years passed before a ship was found that was headed back to Squanto's home. He was able to get hired as a translator. They made a stop in Newfoundland before they headed to his home. Once he arrived back to his home, he realized no one was there. Where was Squanto's tribe? Another nearby tribe told him that all his people had died from disease. Squanto was very sad and wandered the land for a while. I couldn't imagine how Squanto felt all this time spent trying to get back home and then nobody was there? Poor Squanto. Squanto was eventually captured by the Wampanoag tribe. You wonder why this happened, right? I'm probably thinking because he was hanging with the settlers and he spoke their language. They probably grew very wary of him. In the story of Joseph, he was sent to prison after being accused of a crime he didn't commit. The Wampanoag tribe began to watch a new group of English settlers who were struggling to survive the harsh winters. You wonder why they were watching them so closely? Probably because they didn't know if they were good or evil. Samoset, a man from the tribe, boldly went to the settlers and started speaking English. Of course they were shocked. He told them of a man who had been to England and could speak better English than him. It was Squanto. With Squanto's help as an interpreter, the chief of the Wampanoag tribe and the pilgrims came to an agreement to not harm each other and that they would help each other. Squanto became a valuable resource to both. Joseph too became a valuable resource after he interpreted a dream for Pharaoh who then put Joseph in charge of all of Egypt. See, Joseph had a plan to help Egypt when there would be a famine for seven years. Wondering what the word famine means? It's a shortage of food. Squanto, like Joseph, raised his status in the colony and with the tribe by showing his resourcefulness and value. Squanto taught the pilgrims how to grow crops and survive in the new land the same way Joseph helped Egypt during the famine. Squanto passed away after visiting another tribe and contracting a disease that killed him in 1622. Isn't it interesting how similar Squanto and Joseph's lives were? Though their journeys took many years, they were able to fulfill God's purpose. I hope you all enjoyed the story of Joseph and Squanto. See you guys later, bye. The story of Joseph can be found in Genesis chapter 37 through chapter 50.